already see it, but I'm going to show you exactly what I'm finding after running this insert bed liner for a few years now. And what it did to the fresh paint job. Check this out. No real big surprise though. Look at this. That's all scratches. And it looks the same way on the other side. I'm not too shocked that it did it though. But today we're going to go ahead and correct this. We're going to use some Raptor bed line. I want you to stay tuned and watch till the end because we're going to do this entire bed. And I think you're going to love the before and afters. And you guys get to see it with me because I'm really pumped about this. I'm not really too concerned that this is happening because I'm going to go ahead and bed line out to about this lip right here. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how I'm doing this, what products I'm using. Stay tuned. Guys, let's go ahead and jump right into it. I don't want to waste any time. I'll show you guys exactly what this looks like after. So we're just going to go ahead and time lapse this really quick, explain to you guys how we did it. As you guys can tell, the wheel wells are pretty beat up. So you're going to see that once it's done. It's not going to fill that in. I actually talked to Kyle Rust about mechanic. He, he's done this numerous times, and he was letting me know that all these little dents and stuff, you're still going to see it. I don't know if you guys know this, but I use this truck to pick up wood. I put a lot of wood in the bed of the truck. I also put a lot of wood in the trailer, so I work this thing. It looked like a good truck and something that you probably wouldn't want to use to actually work, but I work it. It's a truck. Now, I'm going to call it right now because you guys are already going to tell me in the comments. It looks horrible. It's very disappointing. I don't really care because we're going to correct that today in this video. The biggest reason why this happened right here, I needed to lay adhesive all the way down this and then on the side as well so why I would do that when I put the plastic insert in is because we don't want it to rub while we're driving but regardless it still does vibrate so let me show you exactly what we'll be using to finish this bed here you've probably seen me use this product before it's called Raptor and here is the part number it's UP0820 it's the black color here is the contents of the box you have your hardener you have a cool little mixing cup which you need to fill up to the line it's they make it really simple basically what you do is you take that you fill it up to eight ounces we'll take that hardener from this cup you pour it in here you shake it up you put the spray gun on it on the end of it hook it up to your air compressor and you are good to hook the package they set me up with four of these bottles i want to try to use all of them um, so this is going to be a pretty lengthy process so again i'm not going to draw this out we're just going to get this done i got a lot of prep work to do i have a lot of sanding to do i'm actually going to use that angle grinder 80 grit and just blast away if we're done with that i'm going to get kyle on this channel today and we're going to talk about his bedlined lbz duramax as well that thing is a beast if you guys missed out on some of those videos that i've done on the channel with his truck it looks amazing he bedlined his entire duramax it's a risky move for him but he does drive it in the winter time try not to drive this thing in the winter i have a beater for that one it doesn't look like a beater but it is it's it's got its flaws but i drive the tahoe everywhere in the winter time heads up i do not have the actual gun for it i'll be using a cheap harbor freight one i don't really care about and i'll go ahead and just pour the mixture in should have ordered the gun i got ahead of myself regardless i'm still going to achieve the same results I'm gonna try to keep it at 50 PSI when I spray so I can get the prep work done. My wife is actually wanting to help out. I'll throw the angle grinder at her as well. guys we are done look at that that is this is awesome wow look at that So it's the next day and we have Kyle here. What's up guys? Runs the YouTube channel. Um, you have two of them. That's right. I've got Rust Belt Mechanic, uh, which has been, you know, we've had that going for about three and a half years. And then we just started a second one called Rust Belt Ranch. There's a lot of really cool tool reviews and that's kind of what brought me onto that thing in particular. And it's kind of cool he's here. Actually, he's got his big old bad trailer here. Uh, he drove all the way up here from Ohio because I had some stuff I needed to drop off with him. So he decided to drive up here instead of me driving down there. So that's pretty cool of him. So it looks good. I'm impressed. I told you guys this in the beginning of the video that these bumps right here aren't going to go away when you spray this stuff over that. I asked you that question in the last Raptor video about your truck, all the little dings and dents. If you were to paint it, 
with the Raptor product, would it cover that up? It absolutely will not, as a matter of fact. I mean, you might get some like little scuffs and blemishes to be taken away, but you have to do all the body work just normally like you would a paint job. Dings, dents, and I've had a million people ask me, will it cover rust? No, it won't, and it won't adhere to rust either. So don't think that it will. If you have any kind of rust or any kind of you know, corrosion like that, you have to get rid of it before you put this stuff on because it will not hold to it. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I know you didn't see me when I prepped this thing, but <laughs> I wrapped the entire cab with a tarp and I used plastic and I draped it all down the sides of the bed, the, the entire bed, about up to half of the truck. And then I just use painter's tape for everything else. So That's good because in my history of stuff, I didn't cover stuff like floor and other things around it. When I did like the video where I did my bumpers and everything on my truck, uh, and that stuff goes everywhere. It literally, and it's like sticky pine tar everywhere. Do not have it around anything you want to keep or anything you want kept nice. You know, the, the guns that you're going to use on this one, make sure you don't use a fancy nice one that you want to keep or anything like that because the two-part Raptor, it pretty much just sticks to it and won't come off of it ever again. So, just an FYI. Let me show you the gun that I used. I purchased this gun from Harbor Freight. We actually use this to paint the Cummins frame, or the Dodge frame, sorry. Use this to paint the frame on the Dodge, and this is a 1.4. The instructions, it says 1.3. So, the reason why it's not all textury looking, it kinda is, look at that. It sorta is, it's got that little bit of texture to it. It, it is a little flat, but it's not super like thick is where I'm getting at. You have your truck here. Let's look at that really quick. We'll compare the two, but in my opinion, I'm happy with the results. I want you guys to let me know in the comments what you think about how this went. And like I said, guys, I'm using this truck. Bricks, as you can tell, lumber, lots of stuff. Pull trailers. I work this bad boy. I really pull trailers across three or four states sometimes, numerous times on numerous occasions with this old school LBZ. I really don't have a whole lot of issues with it. Except for that one time when the return line blew off because I used the cheap <laughs> eBay aftermarket part. Wait, 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 wait what about <laughs> you buying cheap parts? <laughs> <laughs> that did happen. To haul that girl right there. Ooh, she, there we go. That one right there, the LMM Duramax. Yeah, you guys are probably wondering what's going on with that old girl. It'll be in here soon. Let's look at your truck. Let's go check it out. Man, look at this trailer. Woo! Big money over here. Man, I gotta do what 30. you do for a living. She's dirty. Turning wrenches. Yeah, buddy. Tell you what, that's the thing to do. But yeah, I use this truck too. You can tell I haven't cleaned the wheels in God knows how long in this thing. Well, you just drove four hours through a rainstorm. I so. use it. I went through the creek all day yesterday, taking wood back and forth on the property. So you got to do what you got to do. And this Raptor bed liner is what I really, you know, love this thing for. Now, there's a couple of different ways we were talking about application. This one was applied at a higher pressure with a little bit of urethane thinner in two really thin coats with the Raptor gun. So there's that version. And then you can see I did my mirrors a little bit different. Still used the Raptor gun, but did not thin it down and shot it at like 4550 PSI. Did two thicker coats. And this is the texture that you'll get from that one. So you can see the difference there between that one and this thinner style right here. I remember when you took a big broom, a big shop push broom. Oh, I, I beat the crap <laughs> And out rubbed it all the way down the side of this truck. Oh yeah, all you the can... time. And then I also even did my suspension. The, the BDS front plates and the skid components down there, not a single chip in there. And that was the same version almost as the mirrors, except for we did a third coat on that one to make sure it was nice and thick and not gonna come off. Love the texture, I think it looks really good. Are these boost mirrors? Actually, no, they're not. These are cheap Chinese ones off of Amazon. Really? It's got all of boost internals. I did a couple of videos on how to uh, switch some of the stuff out. Actually the same length and specs, but the only thing that I hate that sucks about it is it's like it's got the wrong detent positions. Like, so I could see the truck, it needs to be like 10 degrees further that way. Yeah, see, I don't have that problem it's with my Boost Auto Parts mirrors. So frustrating with these. Maybe Chinese you should get a things. set of Boost mirrors. I need to get a set of Boost mirrors. You know, with and all the I'll, Boost internals, I'll eventually get there, I'm sure. I wonder if you can get, you could probably reuse the caps though on your other mirrors. 
Just take the caps off? That I don't know of. They say that they don't exactly match up, but I haven't tried, so hmm. I don't know. Boost, I, we need to get the, this, this man a set of mirrors, seriously. I need to be able to see my trailer. I love the bumper, man. The bumper was done a totally different way, actually. You guys gotta see this in person. This, this was done cool. with 2K aerosol for Raptor. So you can get it in their their rattle can version where you have to actually compress the button on the bottom and mix the two parts. But that was all done just with, I think, three cans for the front bumper and two cans for the rear, and then one for the grill as well. A Toyota Corolla came back and backed into it and hit it. So that's all it did. You probably love Biden too. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I do appreciate you bringing this out. It's kind of cool because I, we just did the bed line in the uh, LBZ back here. And then of course you brought long bed Larry out here to uh, show yeah, me buddy. this Raptor line job had, here. It looks really good. I had to be able to do that one. Unfortunately, I actually haven't used Raptor in the bed, but it is kind of bed line and sorry, it's full of mulch and crap. Hey man, it's a truck. It's literally been driving back and forth picking up mulch having them use the skid steer dumping mulch right in the bed of that truck so using it actually i'm really considering taking this to the truck show in july july 31st we're gonna go ahead and throw her on the dyno and see what kind of power numbers we we pull on that one everybody's talking about the ford the big bad ford but i don't know yet I'm not gonna lie i'm pretty excited about that one and i'm kind of scared because i really want to throw this on the dyno because i haven't put it in tune five and officially dynoed the compound setup. Pop the hood, bro. Oh man, hey, this right here, I think he's leaving his memorabilia. I'm not too sure. It's yep. been a while since that's happened. So he sharpied it on but there. Let me, yeah. <laughs> oh, did this. let me lower the camera here. Yes, because of the blow off valve. That's exactly what happened. Too much, too much, uh, what? Too many boosticles. I got the blow off valve from Turbo Smart because this thing pushes upwards of uh, 55, 56 pounds of boost. Uh, compound set up with a Ryan 6466 in the valley. And we got a big S475 from HSP on top. So check out the Cummins. I think this is your first time looking at it. I'm pretty impressed by it right here. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm super excited to see this and what you've got kind of planned for this setup on it. What kind of turbos and stuff are you gonna go with? Get this man. Yes. In there, some forged pistons. Uh huh. You see, the thing is, is I know I think I talked to you about this already off camera, but basically everything that's done to this engine, and this is coming from Miller Engines, guys, Pennsylvania. Good dude. His name's Matt. He's the builder. But basically everything in here is billet and upgraded, with the exception of the piston rods. You don't have to on those though. That's just one thing that the Cummins motor are just known for. They can handle like 11, 12, 1300 horsepower with factory rods. They, they, they don't have to have the upgrades like our LBZs and the Duramax. You know, you get to that 600, 750 and you're talking, we're, we're on the verge of scattering something on the bottom end, which is what I'm worried about right now. But <laughs> this thing, no. How'd you get a red case from them? Oh, this, uh, this bad boy right here? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I, we would consider this, I always say, we consider these transfer cases built. They're coming from Kodiak truck, which you guys know, but the reason why I say they're built, and I'm not sure with, with these ones, with the DHDs and the DHLs, but I know with the Duramaxes, they have the main shaft, which is right in the center of that transfer case. That triple roller bearing? Yeah, stuff. it's basically right in the center, and it's it rolls on friction, basically. In the lack thereof friction, so it rolls a whole lot easier. And the internals, the rings that he puts in there for the retainers and the triple roller bearings, it's it's on another level. So really efficient, really well built, you know, Kodiak, that's where you go to for transfer cases. I don't like to say, maybe it's just in my head, I don't know, but I've noticed that my big giant truck copes better. Like when you let off the accelerator. I noticed that the very first you time. You noticed I that too. The first time I drove. Well, I'm glad I'm talking about it. So, yeah. Not getting paid, this isn't like a plug or anything, but Mark is definitely, if you guys want to get your transfer case upgraded, definitely check him out. Also use the coupon code TRUCKMASTER in HSP parts too. We didn't talk about that as well. But anyways, thanks dude. Thanks for coming out. No thanks problem. for uh, checking out the new shop. No problem, man. I'm glad we could see the place. This, this place is turning out really awesome. Looking forward to seeing what you're going to be building next on this stuff. All right, dude. We'll see you later. See ya. thing I didn't mention here, I did do the Gen Y hitch. 
I think it turned out pretty good. It looks really, really nice. It's been on there for about, I think, four years now. I actually did my fuel tank as well for the Cummins. It looks brand new. Check hey guys, so definitely let me know what you think in the comments. Yeah, I think it should have been applied a little thicker. Maybe I should buy one more bottle and then get the spray gun from Raptor and just do one coat over it and maybe make it a little thicker looking, actually like a real bed line because the gun that I was using obviously was uh, applying it a lot thinner than I wanted it to. But either way, I think it looks pretty good. What was the worst part? Sanding that down wasn't fun because it kind of like bent over the whole time and it just kind of hurt your muscles. That time lapse was like 22 seconds, I think, just it, to sand it. Yeah, I just... But it took us like, I think it probably took us about two hours. Yeah. It was crazy because you had to get all the little crevices because you have to scuff it up in order to apply that paint or it's not going to sit right. But one thing, though, that we talked about in the video is, of course, the imperfections that you're going to see in this box here. A lot of the dents, the dings, the scuffs, the scratches, you're still going to see it. It's a misconception. A lot of guys think that if I just throw a bed liner over it, then it's going to cover that stuff up, but it's not. You guys are probably wondering, like, why didn't I just go over, especially with this scratch right here? I have a spoiler on the back of this tailgate, so it's going to look really nice once I put it on. But in my opinion, guys, those plastic bed liners, they're probably not the best option unless you apply it correctly. They're more like wheel flares, in my opinion. They scratch the paint and they just retain a lot of dirt. And but go team. Good job. Guys, I do appreciate you watching. Make sure you subscribe. Continue to follow along because I think our very next video is going to be our startup on that Cummins. You think so? I think so. But I think this channel is going to get pretty interesting. That's it, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned.